When Holland, Michigan was settled in the middle of the 19th century, a band of Dutch colonists began clearing the trees that surrounded a pristine inland lake. The Native Americans who preceded them called the lake Makatawa. Reverend Van Ralty, who was the leader of this group of sea cedars from the State Church of the Netherlands, chose this area because of the lake. Judge John Kellogg of Allegan brought Van Ralty here in early January, and he walked through the snow on snowshoes with an Indian guide, and he became convinced that this was an ideal place to settle his Dutch colony. And then the settlers arrived that spring, and the snow melted, and they discovered they were standing in a swamp. In the first years, it was very difficult. They were opening up virgin land. It was so thickly wooded that they needed to actually be able to get in and out of the lake, so they dug a channel, and that allows the lake to continuously drain into Lake Michigan. The lake itself has not changed shape in 150 years. The water quality has changed, however. We have too many nutrients in the lake, and that puts the ecological cycle out of balance. The one that's in excess here is phosphorus, and those particles come attached to sediment. So phosphorus comes with the dirt. When it rains, raindrops are hitting the soil, and if it's a big rainstorm, they're hitting the soil with a lot of impact. And they're carrying soil and all the nutrients that are attached to those soil particles down a slope to the nearest stream. When you're driving around in a rainstorm and you're driving over these ditches and these creeks in the South Branch, if you look over the, the roadway, you'll see that it looks like chocolate milk. And rivers and streams aren't supposed to look like that. So we're just pumping Lake Mekatawa full of these sediments, nutrients. If you have too many nutrients, the algae will go wild, they'll, they'll bloom, they'll have um, a, a blockage of the light that gets through to the bottom, so the plants on the bottom die. With those lake plants gone, the fish populations will change. So this ecological balance has been upset by putting too many nutrients into the lake. The good news is that it is fixable. Most of our problems are going to be solved by getting rid of dirt. Lakes are very resilient systems. If you stop the abuse, they tend to recover relatively quickly. So uh, it's, it's sort of like stopping smoking. Uh, if you do that immediately, you will see a benefit in terms of your lung capacity recovery. And it's the same thing with lakes. In order to clean up the watershed, it'll take a significant multifaceted approach. There's no one thing that can be done that will address all the concerns and problems that are facing the watershed. But one of the main areas that we can address is the wetlands that were lost in the original settlement of the Holland Zealand area. These very important wetland restoration sites that we're going to have in critical areas of the watershed are hugely important for holding that water back, reducing flooding, providing habitat, and really reducing the amount of nutrients in Lake Makatawa. The sediment and phosphorus, instead of flowing downstream, will be diverted into these wetland restoration areas. The sediment will filter out, settle out naturally, the sediment is, is like glue, it's, the phosphorus sticks to it. So if you can settle out the sediment, you're gonna settle out a lot of the phosphorus as well, and then keep it in that wetland. We probably wouldn't want to turn the whole area back into wetlands, but if we can do it at a few select sites and design them to be as efficient as possible, we hope to have as big a bang for the buck as we can make with just a, a few areas. In order to clean up Lake Makatawa and the watershed, it was known that we had to determine the exact source points of the sediment and nutrient pollution that was entering the system. Nearly 50 sites were set up to observe and monitor the water quality conditions within the watershed system over a course of about two years. The whole thing about measuring the sediment coming down and actually yeah. putting numbers in, in, otherwise it's just a figment of a model. Right. And I think that's a aha uh -huh yeah. type thing. If we know where the sediment's coming from, we can begin to go to back, basically follow these streams back up and look, okay, is there gonna be bank erosion here? Is there poor buffer strips? Is there a lot of soil erosion happening in any of these places? We can actually say, no, we've sampled this for 18 straight months. This is the amount of sediment coming down this one. This is the amount of sediment coming down this stream. And we can actually, we have it all laid out. We can point to which sub watershed is to which one is the dirtiest now. The topsoil loss is affecting farming as well as it's affecting lake whack water quality. To improve the watershed, there needs to be a multitude of production practices being done. 
We need sediment traps, we need buffer strips, we need waterways, but we need to protect that soil. I think it just takes a lot of effort between achieving economic objectives while also achieving long-term stewardship, but we accept that challenge and we're part of the community and yeah. realize the need for that. For the most part, the ag community has been really supportive of our efforts. It's more historical use of the land that we're trying to overcome now. And once we get beyond that, I think everybody has a role to play in keeping the water quality clean. I think it's also key, too, that people understand that, you know, it's not just one group of people that have caused this to happen. It's happened over the years, so whether it's acquiring land and returning it to its natural state or cleaning up the tiles that are in the farmlands or, or any of those aspects. That's what you know is gonna to help to make the lake a better place. Every person who lives in the Makatawa watershed can play a role in helping clean up the water. It doesn't matter if you're a student, if you're a business owner, a homeowner, it, all people can play a role in this. We have a chance to fix some things that we didn't know we were hurting. We can all contribute by picking up along the lake shore edge. We can all contribute by watching what we put back into the stormwater drains. The little things can make big differences and that bit by bit, uh, really in our lifetimes, we can make Lake Mac infinitely better than what it is right now. It really is something that we can change. So imagine if we could alter our behavior so that we could permanently affect a change so that there weren't algae blooms, there weren't turbid waters, and that we had the clear water back that was once here. The importance of a restored watershed and healthy lake is well established and widely understood in the Holland community. Remediation of water quality issues is critical to the identity and future prosperity of the region. A healthier Lake Makatao will mean a healthier and happier environment for living and working and playing in the greater Holland community. Part of the reason we all live in Holland, part of the reason I moved to Holland, uh, was because of its closeness, its proximity to the waterfront. If we can do things to make Lake Makatawa cleaner and better, that only helps our interest in being at the water and only helps our community be stronger in the end. If we, through active means as a community come together and fix that problem, then that's an example for other communities that face the similar types of water quality problems. And we have a chance here to demonstrate as a community how we fix that problem. And I think that as a role model for across the nation is invaluable. And that model would be envied by any other lake in the state of Michigan and probably across most of the Midwest. <laughs>